Review time is the home for all things theme parks. Stay up to date with our content by subscribing and turning on notifications. In November of 2019, the Tower of Terror at Dreamworld Australia launched for the last time. When it opened in 1997, it was the fastest and tallest roller coaster in the world. A rare accolade for an Australian attraction that really started to bring international attention to our quaint theme parks. Though after holding world titles, losing them, and seeing other additions eventually overshadow its accomplishments, the management of Dreamworld decided that it was time to say goodbye to the iconic attraction as it had finally run its course. When a ride closes, it feels like a chapter is closing on a park, and with it a generation of riders, experiences, and memories. Many of our most cherished memories are not those merely wandering a park, but are those formed on a ride, and it's tough when the attraction which we associate so much with is taken away. But for a park to grow, you often need to move on from the past and aim for bigger, greater things. But how is it determined when it's time to say that final farewell? Why do some rides close? Some sit abandoned, and others seem like they've been around forever with no closure in sight. For review time, I'm Dominic, and this is what happens to a ride when it's time to say goodbye. The first point to make is that theme park rides don't really have a set lifespan. They have an expected life cycle, but similar to a car, it really depends on how they're treated as to how long they'll last. Two theme parks can open the exact same attraction at roughly the same time and have completely different lifespans merely based on how they perform their maintenance. Maintenance concerns are the most common reasons to decommission a ride. As the age of an attraction increases, the costs naturally become higher to maintain it. Parts become more scarce and problems become more complicated. It is then a matter of determining whether these complications which increase the operating costs are a worthwhile investment. Though even theme park operators are not immune to procrastination. Sometimes the easier option is to leave the decision of closing and removing an attraction to another day, and this gives us rides which are standing but not operating, or SBNO. Often this will happen when an attraction is salvageable, but the resources to maintain it, whether that be money, parts, or expertise, is merely not available at the time that the ride requires it, but there is a chance that it could be available in the future. An example of this is Arkham Asylum at Warner Brothers Movie World, which has been under maintenance since December of 2019. Unlike every other planned maintenance at Movie World, Arkham Asylum has no scheduled reopening date in sight, which officially makes it SBNO. With no official reason for the extended closure, it can be assumed that this is likely due to maintenance concerns or cost. Theme park attractions are incredibly expensive to operate. Sometimes merely the cost of an attraction alone is enough to warrant letting it go. Older rides with less efficient systems and more mechanical parts are very likely to rack up an expensive bill. Consider Dreamworld's own Tower of Terror, which used linear synchronous motors to propel the ride vehicle along the track. These motors are essentially giant electromagnets and are quoted as using 2.2 megawatts of electricity for each individual launch. With an average ride cycle of roughly 7 minutes, on an average day, Tower of Terror would launch around 60 times, meaning that on that ride alone, Dreamworld would be charged for 132 megawatts of electricity. The average household in Queensland will use roughly 6 megawatts per year, which leaves Dreamworld with a single attraction using 22 times more power in a single day than an entire household would use in a year you can see how the bills would start to add up. To combat this, some theme parks employ different tactics, such as relying heavily on sponsorships to help cover the operational costs of attractions. Epcot is the prime example of this, with attractions like Mission Space sponsored by HP and Test Track sponsored by Chevrolet. Both of these attractions were constructed with and are maintained using payments from these sponsors. 
When a ride loses its sponsorship deal, it can almost guarantee a swift decline for the attraction. Sponsorships alleviate many of the operational costs of their specific rides around a theme park, and when a sponsor decides to throw in the towel or ceases to exist due to bankruptcy, then the operational costs now have to be burdened by the theme park's already incredibly tight budget. Many attractions in Epcot have seen this fate over the years, with an example being the decline of Horizons after it lost its General Electric sponsorship. Though these sponsorships may also have clauses which require their attractions to be updated after a certain time period, such as Kodak's sponsorship of the Imagination Pavilion, which led to the incredibly underwhelming Journey Into Your Imagination redo of the Imagination Pavilion in 1999. Many companies will agree to the clause as they don't want their brand being associated with an outdated attraction. As the attraction begins to decline, so too does the public's perception of it, and when its addition no longer appears financially beneficial to the theme park, it's very likely to be on the chopping block. In the ever-dynamic environment of the industry, theme parks merely cannot afford to be sentimental, especially when new attractions means new opportunities. Though theme parks are not always going to have an attraction which has reached its expiration date for their new opportunities, with limited land that often means the parks need to weigh up its options when comparing the old with the new. Autopia at Hong Kong Disneyland was nowhere near the end of its life cycle when it closed in 2016, only 10 years after opening in 2006. But its location within Tomorrowland was too good for Disney to pass up. The attraction was demolished to preemptively make way for Avengers Quinjet Experience as part of the Stark Expo, which serves as a mini land within Hong Kong Disneyland's Tomorrowland. Considering that Disneyland has been open since 1955, it's clear that its removal was not due to maintenance or cost problems, but merely because it occupied land that held the potential for a greater experience which would increase the reputation of the park whilst also driving ticket sales. When facing up against the competition, theme parks want to ensure that they have the best attractions that will compel guests into their parks. Though sometimes an attraction may not live up to the quality or expectation that the ticket price sets. Superstar Limo was part of the opening day lineup at Disney's California Adventure, which debuted in February of 2001. Billed as an exciting adventure through Hollywood, evading the paparazzi and running into the lively actors that call Beverly Hills their home, the attraction has gone down in history as the worst Disney ride ever created. Critical reception was damning, and many reviews criticised the ride's poor concept and execution. Considered a major blemish on the already lacklustre California Adventure theme park, Disney made the decision to close the attraction less than one year later in January of 2002 due to poor reception, with no plans for a successor attraction. This is a classic example of an attraction misrepresenting its brand. Disney prides itself on being a leader in the industry, providing only the highest of quality, and it turned out that closing the door and throwing away the key was a more suitable experience for guests than subjecting them to the horrors that was Superstar Limo. After four years, the attraction would find a more suitable replacement under the Pixar brand with Monsters Inc, Mike and Sully to the rescue. This addition recycled the layout and vehicles of Superstar Limo and was received far more favourably by the public and critics. Theme park goers can become very excited about a new attraction coming to their local theme parks, but sometimes for the neighbours, a new attraction means new problems. Luna Park Sydney has a rocky history with its neighbours at Milton's Point, and considering the proximity of the theme park to the apartments on the hill, it's not difficult to see why. But during the 1994 redevelopment of Luna Park, management invested in an $8 million Arrow Custom Looper coaster called the Big Dipper to bring new life to the historically troublesome theme park. Nearby residents weren't thrilled about the new roller coaster citing that upon opening, it was one of the major contributors to the park's ambient noise pollution. 
After multiple court hearings from both the residents and the park's administration, the court ordered that the Big Dipper could only operate under certain times and under strict conditions. These restrictions ended up being a major blow to the park. And just a year after opening in 1996, Luna Park Sydney's administration closed the gates of the park to the public once again. Over the coming years, the roller coaster would lay abandoned at Luna Park Sydney, waiting for a new administration to redevelop the theme park. Until 2001, when developers were sold the land under the condition that the roller coaster be sold before any further development progressed. The ride was purchased by Macquarie Trust, the owners of Dreamworld at the time, for $3 million and was relocated using 136 trucks at a cost of $2.5 million, including installation. The ride to this day still operates at Dreamworld as Hot Wheels Sidewinder and saw an incredible amount of success after its debut at the park. Though even with all of this in mind, some attractions feel as if they've been around forever with almost no changes. Disneyland is full of prestigious attractions which have been around for decades, and Disney has a good purpose to keep them around. Attractions such as Space Mountain, Pirates of the Caribbean, and the Haunted Mansion define Disneyland's identity, and it provides Disney with a good incentive to continue to maintain them to the highest quality. For less complicated attractions such as the teacups at Disneyland, which is just a simple flat ride, it thankfully has a much longer shelf life due to its lack of complexity and smaller ride envelope. Though for Disney's attractions that do have complex additions and physical tracks subject to the eventual wear and tear such as Space Mountain, they have a trick up their sleeves. Roller coasters shift around as the earth moves and the steel on them over time begins to become rough and worn, which will cause an uncomfortable rider experience. When this happens, Disney will order a track replacement, which literally means rebuilding most of the roller coaster to the exact same specifications, such as what Disneyland did to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad in 2013. When you have Disney money, you're able to afford these luxuries, such as a full replacement of an attraction. And considering that people travel the world to experience these rides, it's worth it for Disney to factor these upgrades into their budget. But not every theme park has Disney money. And for most attractions, it's not a matter of if it will close, but a matter of when. As technology progresses and the industry adapts to the public pressures and trends, we'll unfortunately say goodbye to many attractions that we hold dear. The consolation for these closures is that it often means greater things are to come and that we, the guests, will continue to experience the best that the industry has to offer. But what are your thoughts on this? Is there an attraction which you thought left too soon or didn't have a suitable replacement? We'd love to know in the comments section below. For the home of all things theme parks, I'm Dominic from Review Time. Thanks for watching.